So I've been meaning to make another video on impulse responses for quite a while now. And um, I finally got this 1989 um, Marshall 1960 TV tall vintage cab with uh, 25 watt greenbacks. I drove about an hour and a half to pick it up. Guy was super nice, all the speakers worked, you know, he let me test it out. So I was pretty happy with that deal. It was a great price. I used to have one of these a few years ago. Had to get rid of it for the move and it's it's actually really nice to have one back. The SV20 head seems to pair with it extremely well. I used to have a 100 watt plexi head and I'd use it with a cab like this and a couple of other 4x12 cabs. It did seem to overload this, you know, it's only a 100 watt total cab with the 25 watt greenbacks. Everyone says you should push them a little bit but 100 watt Marshall can push out sort of, you know, 180 watt transients. Although 20 watts, you know, it's on the lower side as far as rock and roll heads go. Um, I'm really happy with it cranked up through the cab. It actually, it, it's crazy how loud it gets for a 20 watt head compared to say like a deluxe reverb at 22 watts. Yeah, this has all the tone and all the sustain and like the balls that you, that you look for when you have kind of like the smallish half stack rig like this. Anyway, enough about that. Today is about impulse responses and I'm sort of venturing a little bit into new territory because I've got the screen recording going and background recording my headphone output in Reaper whilst we're going to be auditioning impulses in Pro Tools and creating them at the same time. So we may get a crash, we may have to reassess how I do this. We'll see how we go. Basically, I'm going to start off using Apple's IR utility. There's plenty of alternatives. Um, I used to use Voxengo Deconvolver, which had a test tone generator for the sine sweep and everything, and then you'd obviously use your audio interface to do all the routing. Uh, so that's a great Windows alternative. Um, but for Mac users, which a lot of music people seem to use, um, the IR utility is very intuitive, easy to use, and it seems to work well, give good results. So let's go take a look at that. So over here, this is the RME uh, control routing interface. We basically got two mics set up on the cab. We've got an SM57 on channel one and a Rode NTR on channel two. Uh, just that classic sort of ribbon and um, dynamic combo. Here, let's just go, let's just start new. So we're gonna do both mics, we'll do stereo. So basically we got channel one, channel two here. Make this full screen. I'm going to set those to record monitor. So just listen as I move the mic around and I find that when the, when the noise is brightest, that'll give you the clearest tone for the impulse. So I did the 57, now I'm going to do the NTR. So we've got our mics placed where we want them. They're, they're in phase pretty much. We're almost ready to do a sweep. So I've got the presence on maximum on the amp. So we are using the power amp of the Marshall head from the effects return. The presence control is part of the power amp on Marshall heads like this. I've got it at max. We'll take an impulse at max, half, and off, and that'll give, give us six total IRs um, that we can blend however we like at the end of this. In terms of power amp, some people say you need a totally transparent, solid state power amp, like a hi-fi type of amp, but I actually had really good results with just using guitar amp heads with an FX return. It's not like a problem of where you, you know, I'm going to be using the same power amp through this impulse response, but it's, it's not like room resonance where you double up on the resonance, even though you're using the same power amp twice because it's contain it's containing that frequency response in the IR. It doesn't seem to be a problem in terms of bit rate and sample rate. I go 96, 32. I don't think there's a huge difference in doing them at 44 or 48 kilohertz, but 96 seems like a happy medium where the interface can handle doing everything uh, with low latency in your session once you 
re-import the impulses. So the other thing is room size. I'm in a really small room. You can probably tell by the sound of my voice. But as long as you don't do the sweep super loud through the mics, then you won't capture too much of the small kind of echoey room in the impulse. Um, though I would encourage, if you have a plot of land, if you have a you know an uncle or whatever who has a farm that you can take all your equipment to and do really loud impulses, that can be a lot of fun as well because you can capture like ambient reverbs off the trees and stuff like that if you do them loud enough and and so you can get like an anechoic semi-anechoic environment by by doing them outside um if you have that option i'd certainly encourage experimenting with it i'm, I'm gonna do some outside just in the backyard of this house later in the week <clears throat> just to compare to these because i'm really happy with these at low volume but we might try some where you push sort of to the limit of the audio interface you know, input volume to capture more of the space in there. So you don't have to add reverb in the box. Um, you might be able to get a bit more natural sound doing it that way. Anyway, let's do our first sweep. So this is with the presence max. Um, just be wary of the sweep volume when you're going into a power amp like this. I often have my, I've already done a couple practice ones today to, to set the levels, but I often have my finger on the trigger of the hardware output of the interface to make sure that it doesn't go insanely loud so that's just something to look out for anyway let's run this sweep see what happens so then we deconvolve that so we're going to export that create setting so this is making a space designer setting in logic done now let's put it to Put it to half, record again, sweep. Deconvolve, create setting. So the volume I'm doing these, it's just a little bit above speaking level, nothing crazy. I used to think that, you know, you'd want to hit the speaker as hard as you would with the amp cranked, but it's it's not really the case because then you get distortion in there and it sort of ruins the frequency response because it doesn't capture the distortion in the way that you want. Um, okay, so we're pretty much done with impulse response utility, so we'll quit that. Save it. Now what we're going to do is um, basically... You can go into Logic if you want to find where those files are. Um, I've already got that open here. So it's in, Apple always hides things in silly places anyway. Hard drive, library, application support. No, it's not even there. Sorry, it's here. It's hard drive, users, uh, music, audio music apps, impulse responses. And then those should be right here, okay? So what I want to do, because they're SDIR files, I can use them in Space Designer, but I don't love using Space Designer for impulse responses because it seems to um, it seems to add like a pre-delay at the start and messing with the settings, it just takes more time. So I'm going to do it all in Pro Tools. Um, so I've got those files on the screen there. Let's open up a Pro Tools session. So I'm going to Shift Command I and I'm gonna import the three files that we just made, the SDIR files, because they are WAV files, they're just sort of disguised as Space Designer Impulse Response Settings by Apple. Uh, let's go copy, they should be the 96K, same sample rate, done. Put them on three new tracks. Okay, so that's cool, we got those there. Um, so it puts this this might just be the extreme low frequency part of the sweep. Either way, uh, we're going to get rid of it because otherwise you're going to have it's going to add to your input latency, which you really don't want when you're playing guitar through impulses. So I've zoomed right in and I've put the the waveform sort of as big as it goes on there, just so we're not getting rid of any of even like the very start of that transient. You can see there's one millisecond here, so you know it's fine to leave that much space I'm not going to worry about it so I'm just going to delete all of that and then at the end as well um, it uh, as far as I know impulse response utility makes them about one second long we definitely don't need that much information 
um, I'll link Pete Thorne's video. He he made a whole video on how, like where he spoke with the guy from Two Notes about how long IRs need to be. Um, I mean, if you look there, there's no information really after. Let's just be safe and let's make them. Let's just cut them all. Yeah, it doesn't even matter. Delete all that. Now, just make sure in slip mode, I'm gonna put a little fade on them all, just, just to make sure everything's nice and smooth. And we're also gonna put a fade at the start. Just a real short one on each of those. Now we're gonna bounce them out. So we have web files. So we can use web files in other DAWs and other impulse response loaders. So we soloed that first one there. Um, that is presence half. Okay, so let's bounce it out. Um, I'm doing multi mono. That way you still keep the mic separation, and then you can you can tweak the levels of each mic later. So for example, it'll sound more less in your face and more roomy with more higher concentration of the ribbon mic and more sort of in your face with it, you know, more present with the SM57 in theory. But also this means that we can mix the, we can mix and match with the different presence levels from the power amp for each mic. Okay, so presence half. Yeah, whatever, presence half one. Okay, and it'll, it'll put L and R basically. Done. Next one. This one is called Presence Quarter. Done. This one is called Presence Max. Done. Now we're going to open up uh, this we're going to test those basically so let's go a mono audio track we're going to play guitar through this track um let's put it in input three let's go um two notes wall of sound it's a pretty good loader um i've used fog audio thing i think audio thing fog can vol um is like a one i've used in the past to load irs and that's pretty good but I think this is free even if you don't have a two notes product. I'm not certain on that. Anyway, um, so I switched to this view. I think a lot of people prefer this view. Let's just make a folder. So all those bounce files that we just made, let's put them in a folder so it's nice and organized so that it's on the desktop. Um, So that's all the new ones in that folder there. We go here, select directory, new folder, okay. Now, let's go presence max left for here, this impulse. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn off everything besides the impulse. Let's pan it to the middle. Presence max right, presence max left. Now we're gonna plug the head in, we're gonna crank it and let's see how it sounds.
yeah, pretty happy with that. Um, let me know what you think.